Good morning and a very warm welcome to Alma Morning Prayer for Wednesday the 3rd of November when we remember Richard Hooker and Martin of Porres. It's very good to have you with us and to be united together as the Alma community in Angola, London and Mozambique this Wednesday morning and to have been together on Zoom last night as the Alma friends and the Alma reps representing the parish links in London and Angola and Mozambique. Shall we pray? O Lord, open our lips and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Your faithful servants bless you. They make known the glory of your kingdom. Blessed are you, sovereign God, ruler and judge of all. To you be praise and glory forever. In the darkness of this age that is passing away, may the light of your presence, which the saints enjoy, surround our steps as we journey on. May we reflect your glory this day, and so be made ready to see your face in the heavenly city where night shall be no more. Blessed be Father, be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and one mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Our psalm for today is Psalm 9. I will give thanks to you, Lord, with my whole heart. I will tell of all your marvellous works. I will be glad and rejoice in you. I will make music to your name, O Most High. When my enemies are driven back, they stumble and perish at your presence. For you have maintained my right and my cause. You sat on your throne giving gracious judgment. You have rebuked the nations and destroyed the wicked. You have blotted out their name forever and ever. The enemy was utterly laid waste. You uprooted their cities, and their memory has perished. But the Lord shall endure for ever. He has made fast his throne for judgment. For he shall rule the world with righteousness, and govern the peoples with equity. Then will the Lord be a refuge for the oppressed, a refuge in times of trouble. And those who know your name will put their trust in you, for you, Lord, have never failed those who seek you. Sing praises to the Lord who dwells in Zion. Declare among the peoples the things he has done. The avenger of blood has remembered them. He did not forget the cry of the oppressed. Have mercy upon me, O Lord. Consider the trouble I suffer from those who hate me. You that lift me up from the gates of death that I may tell all your praises in the gates of the city of Zion and rejoice in your salvation. The nations shall sink into the pit of their own making and in the snare which they set will their own foot be taken. The Lord makes himself known by his acts of justice. The wicked are snared in the works of their own hands. They shall return to the land of darkness, all the nations that forget God. For the needy shall not always be forgotten, and the hope of the poor shall not perish for ever. Arise, O Lord, and let not mortals have the upper hand. Let the nations be judged before your face. Put them in fear, O Lord, that nations may know themselves to be but mortal. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, 
as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Our first reading is from Isaiah chapter 2, verses 1 to 11. In the days to come, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established as the highest of the mountains and shall be raised above the hills. All the nations shall stream to it. Many people shall come and say, Come, let us go to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways and that we may walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth instruction and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between the nations and shall arbitrate for many peoples. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. O house of Jacob, come let us walk in the light of the Lord. For you have forsaken the ways of your people, O house of Jacob. Indeed, they are full of diviners from the east and soothsayers like the Philistines, and they clasp hands with foreigners. The land is filled with silver and gold, and there is no end to their treasures. Their land is filled with horses, and there is no end to their chariots. The land is filled with idols. They bear, they bear down to the work of their hands, to what their own fingers have made. And so people are humbled, and everyone is brought low. Do not forgive them. Enter into the rock and hide in the dust from the terror of the Lord and from the glory of his majesty. The haughty eyes of people shall be brought low and the pride of everyone shall be humbled and the Lord alone will be exalted on that day. Here ends the lesson. The Canticle I am the Lord, your Holy One, the creator of Israel, your King. Thus says the Lord, who makes a way in the sea, a path in the mighty waters. Remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs forth, do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert and give drink to my chosen people, the people whom I formed for myself, that they may declare my praise. Our second reading is from Matthew, chapter two, verses 16 to the end. When Herod saw that he had been tricked by the wise men, he was infuriated and sent and killed all the children in and around Bethlehem, who were two years old or younger, according to that time that he had learned from the wise men. Then was fulfilled what had been spoken through the prophet Jeremiah. A voice was heard in Ramah, wailing and loud lamentation, Rachel weeping for her children. She refused to be consoled because they are no more. When Herod died, an angel of the Lord suddenly appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt and said, Get up, take the child and his mother and go to the land of Israel, for those who are seeking the child's life are dead. Then Joseph got up and took the child and his mother and went to the land of Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus was ruling over Judea in place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there. And after being warned in a dream, he went away to the district of Galilee. There he made his home in a town called Nazareth, so that what had been spoken through the prophets might be fulfilled. He will be called a Nazarene. I will sing of your love forever, O Lord. My lips shall proclaim your faithfulness. The heavens shall bear witness to your wonders. I will sing forever of your love, O Lord. The assembly of your saints proclaim your truth. My lips shall proclaim your faithfulness. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Steadfast love and faithfulness 
go before you. I will sing forever of your love, O Lord. My lips shall proclaim your faithfulness. We come now to the Benedictus. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath that God swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Shall we pray? We come now, Lord, before you, to pray for our day ahead and its tasks, for the world and its needs, and the church and its life. Father God, we thank you for the signs of growth and encouragement that we have seen. We give you thanks for the new Diocese of Messiaen, inaugurated after the Covid delay on Sunday just gone. We pray for the Vicar General, Agostino Buque. May he know your hand upon him. May he and Ophelia walk the walk that you have for them as they guide this new diocese into being. We pray, Lord, for all our partner bishops, for those who are overseeing such an exciting time of change in Mozambique and Angola. We pray for Bishop Carlos and Bishop Andre, the presiding bishop and dean of the new province, Iama, the Igreja Anglicana de Mozambique e Angola, we pray for Bishops Manuel and Vicente, and for all of the Vicar Generals. Father God, will you give them your grace and your wisdom, your guidance and your love. We think too, Lord, of world leaders and faith leaders who are in Glasgow at the moment for COP26. Lord, we know the urgency, the extreme urgency of what's happening there and the need for us to amend what we are, to direct what we shall be, that we may walk humbly with you, our Lord. For many of us, this will mean giving up some of the carbon advantages that we've had in our lives that we have by accident of birth. Father God, for those countries already facing the devastation of climate change and climate emergencies, we pray that there will be ears to hear their need at Glasgow. There will be the political will to make steps that offer help for mitigation and adaptation. We pray for the young who have led the way in this. We thank you for young Green Anglicans, for Green Anglicans across Southern Africa and the world, and for their leadership. We pray for Canon Rachel, and we pray for the Anglican delegation at COP. We thank you so much for the work that they have all done and for those who walk the 500 miles from the G8 summit in Cornwall all the way to Glasgow. 
to demonstrate their commitment for our world. Father God, we confess that we have not been the stewards we could be. But may we, your church, by word and more importantly, by example, Lord, may we lead the way in showing that it is possible to change our lifestyles, to be more considerate, to tread more lightly for our grandchildren and our grandchildren's children. Father God, give us the will for this to happen. Bestow on world leaders and faith leaders conviction and the, and the wherewithal to make binding agreements so that we can halt the increase in global temperature. Lord, will you be in Glasgow every day, every hour, inspiring, encouraging, whispering in the ears, so that the change we long for might be possible. And across our communion, we pray for Hanuato in Melanesia and Bishop Alfred Karibongi. And in our Alma cycle of prayer, we are praying for an archdeaconry in Cristo Rey Diocese. That's the diocese around the area of Wij in Angola, the first area to hear the Christian message. We are praying for the Archdeaconry of Nazadi and Lukizi and the Venerable Vieira Miguel, who is the Archdeacon. We are praying for St Paul's Kisiona, for Archdeacon Miguel, for Eduardo Mofila, for Andre, Kirim, Andre Kirimbo. We are praying for St Matthew's Makuba. Mukaba, for Juan Lopez Panda, for Manuel Jr., for Francisco dos Santos, and for the Ascension. And here in London, Lord, we pray for Christ the Saviour in Ealing Broadway. We pray for Richard Collins, the Vicar, for Gary Toniguzo, the Administrator, and Father, we pray for Christ the Saviour School, for all the children there who day by day hear of your love for them and your love for your precious world. In this season of all souls and all saints, Lord, we thank you for those people who led us to you, who were the light and example of your love for us. We give you thanks for them and we pray that for those who don't know you, there may be people around them who are the light and love of Jesus to them. Lord, as winter approaches, we pray for the homeless and the refugee and the internally displaced here in London and we think especially of those in Cabo Delgado. Father, we think of 800,000 people who've had been forced to flee from their homes. We pray for all of those who are doing their best to serve those internally displaced people, be it with food, be it with land, be it with shelter be it with knowledge to empower them. We thank you for the United Nations, the World Food Programme, and all the agencies working in Cabo Delgado. We thank you for the Diocese of Nampula, for the work of Bishop Manuel and Muiseto. Father God, be with them today, we pray. And for all those who are in sorrow, in sickness, whether mind, body or spirit. For those who mourn, may they know your presence with them. May they know the everlasting arms around them. 
and the hope that comes from your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of peace, the bond of love who in your Son, Jesus Christ, have made the human race your inseparable dwelling place. After the example of your servant, Richard Hooker, give us grace as your servants, ever to rejoice in the true inheritance of your adopted children and to go forth your praises now and forever through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Uniting our prayers with the whole company of heaven as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May Christ, who has opened the kingdom of heaven, bring us to reign with him in glory. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. It's been a real pleasure to share morning prayer with you this morning. We do this every Wednesday and we share it all around friends in London and we would love to share it more widely. So if you've joined us from out from Mozambique or Angola and you would like to lead an Alma morning prayer, please get in touch. My email's on the website and we would love to share the net even more widely because the critical thing about our partnership, we believe, is that we undergird it in prayer, day by day, in what we do. Thank you so much for joining us today. I hope you'll join us next Wednesday. Goodbye. <laughs>